Hi everyone and welcome to another Fly Deck to Sim video. Today it's something a little bit different to what I usually do but it's a bit of a discussion regarding the overhead panel on the 737 and the position of the engine anti-ice switches and the System B hydraulic pump switches. Now for a little bit of context, on November 25th 2024 a Swift Air 737-400 tragically crashed during its approach into Vilnius and investigators found that both System B hydraulic pumps were turned off. What we're going to do now is jump into the fly deck and show you what indications you'd see if you were to turn off system B hydraulic pressure in the 737. So here we are in the cockpit of the 737. This is the 800 series aircraft. Of course, the aircraft involved, uh, the Swift Air 737, was the 400, the classic variant, but the systems are almost identical. Let's now take a look at the overhead panel of the 737-800. Now, note the position of the System B hydraulic switches. They are very close to the engine anti-ice switches, and the engine anti-ice system you would typically use, uh, depending on the weather, of course, several times during a flight as you enter icing conditions. You put the start switches continuous, you move the uh, engine anti-ice switches on and then you check the indications. Uh, in the NG you've got a, a couple of little green indications, thermal anti-ice on engine 1 and 2. And when you're finished you simply move them off and the start switches off. Now what can happen, crew can inadvertently turn off system B hydraulic pressure because of the location of these switches. Now, I will put my hands up, been operating the aircraft since 2011, and I have once done this as a first officer many years ago. Simply let the system be um, pressure depressurise and then put the pumps back on, continue normal operation. It's easily done, It just you just have to be incredibly vigilant to make sure uh, that you don't turn them off inadvertently. And now as a training captain, I am quite vigilant to make sure I don't repeat what I uh, once did. Anyway, what happens if you do turn the beam pumps off? Well, we'll make sure we have Command B engaged and we'll now turn off System B hydraulic pumps, imagining we thought it was the engine anti-ice. So you've got low pressure indications on the hydraulic system, flight control system B, autopilot's disconnected, you've got the autopilot disconnect warning horn and the flashing amber light, master caution flight controls for system B hydraulic pressure and the hydraulic pumps as well uh, for the master caution. So look, there's loads of indications to ensure that you can check the, the high, or, or, or verify what's happened and, and that's in this case with, of inadvertently depressurized system B. Now if you try to re-engage command B, watch what happens, nothing, you probably get the autopilot warning horn uh, repeat itself as well, but command A is available so let's engage that autopilot, verify command and then you can continue normal operation. And the aircraft still flies fine with one hydraulic system, but one of the most important systems which normally is, is um, powered by system B is the normal flap extension and retraction. So again we've got another master caution flight controls for field diff pressure. I just want to go back onto the flap topic here. Watch what happens if you start slowing down for the approach with system B depressurized. So speed checked, flaps one, let's go straight to flap wire, uh, five, so flap one, flap two, flap five and bug the flap five speed. Let's look at the indications. Look at that, the training edge flaps are not extending, there's no leading edge flap transit light and if we look at the leading edge devices here they're not extending either. Now the reason is system B pressure is used for normal flap operation. The trailing edge flaps um, can be extended without system B pressure using an electric motor as can the leading edge devices using system uh, or standby hydraulic pressure as well but that's a non-normal situation you would configure the aircraft accordingly. But you can see what's happened. We've slowed down to the flap 5 speed. We're below the clean speed, but look, the flaps are up. And if you were to keep slowing down and uh, reducing speed with the flaps up, you will eventually stall. So here we are back at the flap 5 speed. Um, we're level flight, 10 degrees nose up, and we're just around 15 knots above the stick shaker speed. And this is the attitude, these little barber poles, the, the pitch limit indicators at which stick shaker occurs. So let's now um, repressurize system B. You'll find that the low pressure lights will extinguish, as will the other lights on the overhead panel. And now the flap lever's in five. Look at the indication. The uh, system B hydraulic pressure is now extending the trailing edge flaps and also extending the leading edge devices. And now we're at a, uh, a safer configuration for this speed. So to conclude this video, if I'd like you to take anything away from it, especially if you're a 737 operator, remain incredibly vigilant. Don't turn off the System B hydraulic 
pumps instead of the engine anti-ice and if you inadvertently do recognize the indications and repressurize the system and remember to maintain good CRM skills throughout your operation. Situation awareness is incredibly, incredibly important along with the awareness of aircraft state. Now if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the latest content and I'll see you in another video or live stream very soon.